Hello, this is the engineering admissions assessment from November 2021. So as usual for the first video, I'm going to go through part A, just the standard maths and physics questions, 20 rapid fire multiple choice, hopefully get them done well within half an hour of bank some time for part B. So let's kick on. Oh, it's a long way down. Simplify fully all of this where X and Y are positive. So how many X's have we got? So for X, we've got a one, we've got a minus six, so we've got a two. For Y, we've got a two, a minus three, and a one, so that just disappears. For the fives, we've got a one, a minus three, and another one. So we've got minus one there, minus three there, so you must have one over five X cubed, which is E. Right. Question two, we've got air in a piston, density rho, we increase the pressure by 20%. Temperature doesn't change, what's the new density? So we've got the pressure is times six over five. So temperature doesn't change, so our volume's got to be times five over six to keep PV a constant. Which means our density will be times six over five because we divide by the volume. So we're gonna be at 1.2. So we've got another E. Right. Three, which of the following is a rearrangement of this so that Q is the subject? So three over Q is going to be, well, let's get it all over 2R. So eight over 2R minus PR over 2R. So Q is going to be equal to 6R over eight minus PR, which is D. Okay. Fairly simple starters to get us going. Non-ideal transformer has got 100 turns on the primary coil, 25 turns on the secondary coil. It's given three kilowatts and a 12.5 amp current. Output voltage is the same as for an ideal transformer, but the current in the output coil is 40 amps. OK, but our voltage would have dropped. But what is our voltage on the way in? So we want to do 3,000 divided by 12.5. So 12.5 is 100 divided by 8. So if I knock those off, multiply by 8, I'm going to have 240 volts is what's gone in. So I'm going to add 60 volts over here, which means my power is going to be 2,400 for the watts. So I've lost a, what have I lost? I've lost a fifth of the power. So I'm down at F for 80% efficiency. All right, five. Uh, we've got two cylinders, P and Q. X is greater than Y, and they're solid cylinders. What is the positive difference between the two so, uh, surface areas? So surface area of P is going to be, well, we've got two ends. So we've got two pi of X over two squared. And then I'm going to have a oh, 2 pi x over 2 times y. And then I can take off the other one, which is going to be the same. I've just flipped over x's and y's. So 2 pi y over 2 squared minus 2 pi. Well, that's going to be the same thing. They're going to cancel. So I've got a 4 there. So I've got a pi over 2. And then I'll have an x squared minus y squared. So that comes out as C. OK, that's good. Question six, light spring, uncompressed length of that. That's in the picture, 0.5 kilograms. That's not in the picture. Reduces it down to that. OK, what is the energy stored in the spring due to compression? So I want a half kx squared, but I've got that five, the force, is going to be k times x and x is 0 0.02 i.e. 1 over 50 i just find it a lot easier to deal with that so i want to do a half times kx times x so half times 5 uh, times 1 over 50 so i'm going to have 0 0.05 c right. seven the price of item p is reduced by 10 percent next day it's Increase by 10%, right? So it goes down to 90% and then up to 99. Uh, Q is increased by 10 up to 110, and then it's reduced by 10 down to 99. How does the final price 
compare, right? Well, they're both lower. So, A, right, that was a really quick one. Didn't really have to do anything there. Set of decorative lights, 20 lamps in series. Total power is P. Uh, if one of the lamps fails, it becomes short circuited as zero resistance when remaining lamps are still lit. This happens. What is the new total power? Right, so power is V squared over R. We've got the same V squared. Our resistance will drop to 19 over 20. So when we divide that, we'll get 20 over 19. So 20 over 19 P is D. OK. Question nine. We've got right angle triangle. OK, yeah, that's SQT, right angle. Yeah, that's in it. Point R is on SQ, such as SR to RQ. SR to that's one to three. QRP is a right angle triangle. Yeah, fair enough. And they've given us all of those lengths. What is PQ out of all of this then? So SQ squared is going to be 64 minus 16. So, OK, we've got that. And then we're dividing that. We're dividing SQ in the ratio one to three. So SQ is root 48. So that is four root three. So that means that RQ is going to be three root three. And then PQ is going to be uh, the square root of 64 minus, I then need to square this. So that's 27. So root 37, that doesn't look very good. PQ is root 37. Oh, it's in the answers. So D. OK. And then question 10, train accelerates and rests along a straight horizontal section of track. Force exerted on the train uh, is constant and there's a constant frictional force. OK, graph shows momentum with time. Right. So this is going to give us our net force, which is our rate of change of momentum. So we've gone to 12 times 10 to the 6 over 4. So we've got 3 times 10 to the 6. That's the net force. So we're going to have to add on the friction which is 1.8 times 10 to the 7. So we're going to get 2.1 times 10 to the 7. Where's that then? Is that there? Yes, E. OK, so that's halfway through this block. Nothing too challenging yet. Curve with that equation means meets the straight line with that equation at two points, x coordinates P and Q, and then they tell us something about P and Q. What is C? Right, so we've got x squared minus 4x plus 5 is 2x plus c, x squared minus 6x plus 5 minus c is 0. So our p and q then, I'm going to have, are they going to cancel? Well, let's see, we'll do a 6 plus or minus, because yeah, when I subtract one from the other, I'm going to get two lots of the square root, which is going to cancel out the two that's coming from the the, the x squared, the 2a bit. So all I'm going to end up with is the square root of, so I'm going to have 6 uh, squared minus 4ac, so 20, then plus 4c, square rooted has got to be equal to 8. I think is what we're saying on all of this, but I haven't done anything daft. So I've got 16 I need to then take that off of 64, so C is going to be 12, which is F. OK. Uh, ship travels into a wave, travelling in the opposite direction of the ship. It's got horizontal speed of 8, and the wave is going at 3. So we've got a net V of 11 metres per second. Front of the ship rises and falls with a time period of 8 seconds. What is the wavelength of the wave? Well, the wavelength is the... Uh, the speed multiplied by the time period, so it's going to be 88. Uh, yeah, it is there, H. OK. Given that Y is that, what is the value of Y cubed? OK, so we've got a root 3 over 2 minus 1 divided by a half. So we're going to have root 3 minus 2. I need to then cube that, so I'm going to get a 3 root 3. I'm going to get a minus 8, and then I'm going to have three lots of these other ones. So I'm going to have a minus 6 times 3, so minus 18, 
and then I'm going to have a plus of 4 times so 12 root 3. So I've got 15 root 3 minus 26F. All right. Six volt battery connected to an eight ohm resistor. Yeah, so it's all in the picture. They've given us that uh, quarter of an amp. Which graph is possible? VI graph. Okay. Oh, we've got a VI, not an IV. Right, okay, so we need to keep an eye on that for a filament length. So that means then we've got a, well, V is IR. So total resistance is going to be 24. So we must have a uh, 16 ohm resistor i've drawn it next to the ammeter for the um uh, the lamp so we've got 16 ohms there so we must have four volts for our quarter of an amp so we need something that goes through four and a quarter so that means we've got what b or e but they've drawn it with v on the y-axis and current on the x-axis so it's not going to be e it's going to be b so they've tried to catch it because quite often usually when you get your, your your iv for the lamp it's going that way but they've given us a vi so we've got to flip it the other way around so a little bit sneaky there on 14. charlie has a bowl containing red sweets and green sweets they're all identical except the color nine sweets in the bowl he has two at random so probability of getting two red sweets is that. So we'd have R over nine times R minus one over eight is five over 12. So let's get it all over 72 then, because that's just going to make it easier. And so we multiply by six. So we've got 30 over 72. So that means R times R minus one is 30. So R is going to be six which means that G is going to be three. So I want to do G, well, three over nine times two over eight. So that's a third times a quarter is a 12, which is B. That's 15. 16, we've got nuclide X goes to R, Y goes to S. When it starts, we've got equal amount of everything. This is half-life of t, that's a half-life of 2t. What is the ratio or the fraction of r over s at 4t? So here we would have done a half, a quarter, an eighth, a sixteenth. So we've now got 1 and 15 sixteenths for whatever we started for r. Here we've just done a half and a quarter, so we're going to have 1 and 3 quarters. So let's get this all over 16. So we've got 31 over 16. And then we're going to have 16 plus 12. So 28 over 16. So we want 31 over 28, which is C. Excellent. 17, the greatest diagonal distance between two vertices of a cuboid is shown in the diagram is root 77. Similar cuboid has all its lengths exactly half of the original. OK. So that would be halved as well. Sides of the smaller cuboid are this. OK, so we're going to have, well, if, we're, if I don't bother doing the square root in the Pythagoras, then I'm going to get a 77 over 4 is going to be 2 squared plus 3 squared plus x squared. So which is a bit of a mess, isn't it? So 77 over 4 minus, uh, well, 13. So that's 52, so 25 over 4, so 5 over 2. OK, that drops out quite nicely. So A. 18, beaker containing 180 grams of water has a 20 gram ice cube put in. No heat is transferred to the surroundings. What's the final temperature? Right, OK, so we have started off then with 180 uh, times 25, oh, I've done all this in grams, so that's quite nice, uh, times 4. So that's the amount of energy up from zero that we've got, so 18,000 essentially. We want to melt this ice, so to melt that ice is going to take 20 times 300, so that's 6,000. So we've got 12,000 left in order to take 200 grams up 
in uh, temperature. So divide that through to get uh, 60, and then we have to divide by 4 to get a 15 degrees C change, which is D. Nice. Now, I think this has been easier than the previous year. But, you know, we'll see what comes up in the last two questions. Plus, this is the easier section. So, car journey is M miles long. One kilometre is X miles. We get one litre of fuel to go F kilometres. And it's P pence per litre. OK, so if we're doing M miles, that is going to be, so one kilometre is X miles. So we're going to do M over X kilometres. That's what we've got there. And we have to use one litre to go F kilometres. OK, so one kilometre is going to be one over F. So we've got this. So we need to M over F X litres. And then we've got P pence for litre. So we need to multiply by P and we want this in pounds. So divided by 100, MP over 100 FX. Oh, please tell me that's there. There we go, it's the last one, which always gets you worried, doesn't it, when they put it at the bottom of the list. MP over 100 FX. Right, one question to go. Pulse of an ultrasound travels from one end of a solid uniform rod, rod of length L, okay, partially reflected back by a crack and partially by the far end of the rod. We get two different arrival times. What's the distance between the crack and the far end of the rod? Right, so T2 is the time out and back. So that means it would have done two lots, two lots of D, which is crack to the end of the rod, is going to then be our uh, V, and then is going to be the difference between the times. So T2 minus T1. Oh, but they don't have V in any of the answers. Right, okay, so we need to sub that in. So V is going to be equal to two lots of the length divided by uh, T2. So those twos will cancel. So D is going to be L T2 minus T1 over T2. Is that in there? L T2 minus, yeah, it's E. Let me just put the L at the end. OK, that was a fairly safe set, I would say. I mean, the only one that had anything sneaky in it was the one with the IV characteristic because they put it as a VI characteristic. So 14, I would say, was the sneaky one. But otherwise, I think that might have been slightly easier than uh, 2020. But 2021 papers often were slightly easier, you know, lockdown and all that. So, um, yeah, I'll do the, the advanced ones in the next video.